saints of the living God, I want to take this opportunity to welcome you once again to our series of messages from the book of Psalms on the pilgrim Psalms in the name of the Lord. I want to believe that he has been good and faithful over your keeping and allow me in the name of the Lord to welcome you to Bugema University Church where we bring you these studies centering on the pilgrim Psalms. We continue our study today with Psalm 125. But before we go any further, allow me to invite Sister Jacqueline to come and give us a special number, and then we shall carry on. Welcome. Haruku juhurani vivaso Vikabute sumut kwe Ukabura uheru vichemura Hari niji he Ujera jesa kukawe Vika kunanira Bibire Yesu, bimwe guri rebiose, asa gusho bosa biose, aguturi mitwari ku ne mere ye wino musake, arabisho boye, asa guhana gura. Amarira wadise Yeseze ranye kubana nawe Mubihe viko meye Nujiru koba mwisunge Aza kurba nirira Akuja si wachu Mubji charoji sa Bibire Yesu Bimwe guri rebyose Aza gusho boza byose Aguturi mitwari kure mere ye Kwinu musake Arabisho boye Azabuha na gura Marira warise Vibire Yesu Busa Vimwe guri Rajose Azabusha Baza byose Abuturi Mitwari kure Mere ye Kwinu Musa Thank you, Sister Jacqueline. Pilgrim Psalm 125 from the New King James Version, the Bible says. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved but abides forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people from this time forth and forever. For the shelter of wickedness shall not rest on the land allotted to the righteous, lest the righteous reach out their hand to iniquity. Verse 4, do good, O Lord, to those who are good and to those who are upright in their hearts. For as such as turn aside to their crooked ways, 
the Lord shall lead them astray with the workers of iniquity. Peace be upon Israel. Pilgrim Psalm 125. Before we go any further, may I invite you that we bow our heads as we seek the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, what a privilege this is that we can find time again to meditate upon your word as we share it amongst ourselves. We want to thank you for your leading. We want to thank you for your blessings. We want to thank you for your protection over us. And we want to thank you for the privilege that is ours now to meditate upon your word as you talk to us, especially in the times that we live in. Heavenly Father, as we get into your word, we pray that you'll be present through your spirit to guide us into your inspired word. We pray that touch our brain cells, prepare our hearts, and may you also visit with me that as I purpose to communicate your word, it will go live and hampered to your sons and daughters listening. That Heavenly Father, in the end, we will be edified, get to know you better, and have a better living walk with you. Father, to you be glory for now and even forevermore. For we thank and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 125. Psalm 125 happens to fall in the category of psalms that are popularly referred to as this, the as accent psalms. And other versions refer to them as the psalms of degrees. But I like the popular version that renders them as the pilgrim psalms. Because as it is rendered, these were psalms that were sung by the children of Israel as they were coming back from wherever they had dispersed back to Jerusalem during the three major annual festivals that required every Israelite to be present in Israel, in Jerusalem for worship of the Lord their God. And these three major festivals were the festival of the Passover, and another one that came 50 days after the Passover called the Pentecost, or in the Old Testament referred to as the Festival of Weeks. And then thereafter, there was a third major festival, which was the Festival of Shelters. These were three significant festivals that collected and gathered all the children of Israel back in Jerusalem. And it is believed that during these celebrations of the three major festivals, the popular songs or psalms that were sung and recited were none other than the ascent psalms, the psalms of degrees, or the pilgrim psalms. We have so far looked at a number of psalms thus far, and uh, we also went and looked particularly at Psalm 121, which is referred to as the inaugural Psalm of the Pilgrim. And Psalm 121 gave us the setting from home before the journey started. I look to the hills. Where does my salvation come? My salvation comes from the Lord. And then he continues on with an affirmation of the Lord who watches over his people, a God who never slumbers. The uncertainty that awaited the pilgrim during those days, traveling from home into uncertain tyrant, were finally taken over and to conclusion into what we call the arrival psalm which psalm is in 122. And Psalm 122 is a psalm that uh, tells us of the arrival of the pilgrim within the gates of Jerusalem. A celebration psalm, indeed. And then last week we looked at Psalm 124, 
And some that upon reaching Jerusalem, upon starting the celebration of worship, the pilgrim looked back through the year from since the time when they were there a year before. And as that Sam was able to recount the great challenges that the pilgrim had gone through in life, coming to the conclusion that if it had not been for the Lord, who was with the pilgrim, this day could not have been possible. This Sam took us through life's challenges and we noted that it has been the Lord who has been our anchor, our shelter, our defender and shield in all times of life. Yes, there are certain things we can do by ourselves. But as another son will be able to affirm, unless the Lord guards the city and lost, the Lord watches over us and builds the house. Those that do anything, do it in vain. And so it has been the Lord from the beginning to the end. And whatever we can do, we just get to understand, like the Apostle Paul said, that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Friends, it's Christ's strength that enables us to look at any achievement in the past and present and do a celebration because nothing of ourselves is possible because Unless we are connected to the vine, we cannot bear any fruit. Now, Psalm 125. It's a psalm that starts with trust. Those who trust in the Lord. And it has been referred to many as a psalm of trust. But I want to look at it from the thematic flow of the pilgrim psalms or the psalms of the songs of ascent to look at it as a triumph psalm. When we relate to what happens immediately in chapter, in Psalm 125, you where the psalmist is recounting the challenges that the Lord is responsible for the victory. We come now to Psalm 125, which is a psalm of triumph. A psalm of safe, safety and security in the Lord. It's a psalm that brings us the, the understanding that all that has been possible due to the Lord and even the future is possible if we are secure and safe in the Lord. And so it says that those who trust in the Lord are uh, like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abides forever. Brothers and sisters listening to me, this psalm points to our challenges as well. You and I live in prison and presented times. We live in uncertain and insecure times that we are not sure of tomorrow. Even the present is not so secure. We are afraid about, about our health. We are scared about what will come when the sun falls or sets. We are scared at, we are insecure with our jobs. With our, we are insecure with our marriages. We are insecure with our finances. We are not sure about tomorrow to an extent that we can never predict with certainty what may befall us even the next moment. When you start, you start the day, you cannot even know how the day will develop and how the day will end. That's the uncertainty that we move in to an extent, brothers and sisters, that even the times we live in, no one knew that we would be grounded and locked down the way we are. Yes, we have those who study these trends of life. We have those who predict issues in life. We have even some prophets who 
who pretend to know the tomorrow, who pretend to even talk to the Lord directly. I was looking at one gentleman who was calling God at, at the pulpit using his cell phone. And he was duping his congregation that he was talking that life and direct to God. You have all those. But friends, the truth of the matter is we are not sure even of the next moment. And living in such uncertain times, Psalm 125 is an anchor which we can depend upon when life uncertainties and insecurities befall us. Yes, this is a psalm of triumph, but as it also starts and progresses, it's also referred to as a psalm of Zion. Friends, you cannot properly appreciate this psalm until you have gotten into the understanding of the concept of Zion. What is Zion? And he says, those who trust in the Lord are likened to Mount Zion, which cannot be moved but abides forever. This Mount Zion, verse 2 tells us that as the mountains surround Jerusalem, you can substitute and say as the mountains surround Zion, because Zion was within the center of Jerusalem. So the Lord surrounds his people from this time forth and even forever. A proper appreciation of the message of this son takes us to unravel what this Zion element is all about. Zion is a hill. It is a mount. It is a mountain. It's the most significant mountain. It's the most significant place. Zion is the most important location in all Jerusalem. There are many hills the Bible has told us in verse 2. But those hills that surround Jerusalem, the one that towers higher in glory and holiness, is none but Mount Zion. Mount Zion is believed to be the, the seat, the, 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 the mountain or the locality that God chose for his eternal holy abode. History will be able to tell us that Jerusalem was not a city of the Jews or the Israelites. It is David who helps to, 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 to liberate this city from the hand of the Jebusites. And when he overcomes the Jebusites, he brings this Jerusalem, the city of peace, surrounded by a wall with water brooks inside. And he names it the city of David first, because he's the one who fought the Jebusites to overcome them and win this city over. But later on, David dedicates this city to the Lord and becomes the city of God. David, history tells us, that wants to build a, a holy temple within Jerusalem. But God tells him, you will not be the one, but your son that will come will build a city, uh, will build a temple for my abode. And Solomon comes, builds a magnificent uh, temple for the Lord. And he dedicates it to the Lord for holy purposes. And we are told that it is this hill that God chose for his city and for his temple and for his congregation and for his presence. And this becomes the seat of God. When he says that make me a sanctuary that I may dwell in your midst, the children of Israel looked to no other place but to Mount Zion. And so Mount Zion becomes the most significant place in all Israel, in all Jerusalem. And this is synonymous even with Jerusalem itself. That is believed that this is the holy mountain of God. And it's believed that when God is in Jerusalem, when God is on Mount Zion, there is no force, there is no enemy 
There is nothing in heaven or earth or below that can come against a child of God on Mount Zion. And Mount Zion, when you come to the Bible, to the New Testament, is likened over to the heavenly promises of the New Jerusalem and even of our liberation when all is said and done. And so this chapter comes and brings us to the geography of Jerusalem. And the geography of Jerusalem rolls and rotates upon the epicenter of Mount Zion. And the hills, verse 2 tells us, as the mountains surround Jerusalem. But those mountains lose favor, lose glory in the face of Mount Zion. And so this is the mountain, a mountain which is believed to be one that is eternal as God is eternal, a mountain that is not going to be affected by the circumstances of life, that anyone on Mount Zion is secure because he is not only in the Lord, but the Lord is hovering upon such a person. It is against that background, therefore, that uh, the psalmist comes and says that if we have trust in the Lord, if we build and put our trust in the Lord God, he says, we are likened to that special mountain within Jerusalem. A mountain which cannot be moved by earthquake. A mountain which cannot be moved by any invading army. A mountain that cannot be encroached upon by evil because God is on that very mountain. So this is an affirmation that we can put our trust also in the Lord and be secure as person who is on Mount Zion. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved. And friends, this psalm is out to tell us that we are safe and secure in the Lord. Verses 1 and 2 tells us that, yes, in the uncertainties of life, we can rest assured that the Lord is with us if we put our trust in the Lord. Friends, I don't know what you're going through at the moment, but no matter the challenges of life that you encountering at this moment, my invitation is to you as Part the sum is that we can put our trust in no other thing but in the Lord our God. We have seen that there are people who have trusted in many other things which things have eroded and moved away like sifting sand. Money is one of the elements upon which we have put our trust. But we have lived through life and experience to come to the discovery that even money cannot save us many times, even the times that we live in. Friends are there, but friends can betray and desert us. We have those people that have seen many white boats and black boats, but even those that have many letters by their names, We've seen that even knowledge fails. Science has failed in the face of the, the, the pestilences and the pandemic around us. Authority and power also has an end. But the Bible is here to affirm the fact that only those who can establish their faith in the Lord can be fully and forever established as Mount Zion is. I want to invite you that no matter the challenge that you're living in, no matter life's circumstances that are uncertain and secure, you can put your trust knowing that no matter whatever may come, you are safe and secure under his wings. And that's the very song that my sister Jacqueline sang. Under his wings, we can safely abide. Friends, there is no better place to be than in the wings of the Lord. And to put our trust in the Lord during certain and certain times as these that we are living in. Yes, when we know we don't know about tomorrow. 
we can rest ourselves securely in his arms for he is the God of the tomorrow. Another thing that we get to discover here is that those who put their trust in the Lord have their inheritance secure. For verse 3 has said that the scepter of wickedness shall not rest on the land allotted to the righteous, lest the righteous reach out their hands to iniquity. This verse is out to affirm that God is not only going to rest upon his people, but even upon their inheritance and upon whatever belongs to them. God is interested in you, yes, but he is also interested in you because with you are many things around you, including your property and your inheritance. Your inheritance is secure. Your property is secure. Your job is secure. Your family is secure. Your finances are secure only in the Lord our God. May we learn to put our inheritance in him. For when we put our inheritance in the Lord, there, as Matthew tells us, there is no moth, no thief that can ever reach our inheritance because they are safe and secure in the Lord. The last two verses give us an affirmation and says that do good, O Lord, to those who are good. This is now a prayer. Do good to those who are good and to those who are upright in their hearts. As for such as turn aside in their crooked ways, the Lord shall, that is future, lead them away with the workers of iniquity. And he concludes by saying, peace be upon Israel. These two verses give us the affirmation that uh, we are secure in the Lord for not only now, but even for our future. We have a secure future in the Lord our God. Those who put their trust in the Lord have a secure future. They have a secure yesterday because it has been proven and seen. They have a secure today because they are testing on the goodness of the Lord. And they have the hope of a secure tomorrow because their trust in the Lord as it is with Mount Zion that can never be moved. And so with a secure future, the psalmist is here to tell us that I will not be afraid of tomorrow. I'll not be afraid of what will befall me because I know that I may not understand what may be, I may be going through, but I can be confident that the, secure, the future is secure in the Lord my God because he has all mapped out for me. Friends, in these uncertain times, I want to challenge you to put your trust in the Lord so that you will be established that you will be secured and anchored upon him like Mount Zion is my prayer to you is that dare not trust in these things of this world my prayer to you is that you dare not trust in anything but trust in the Lord our God. May he continue to pull you towards himself. That no matter life's circumstances, you will be able to have your tears dried up in the hope knowing that I may cry, but this future is secure for me. But even in the present, we can be able to smile knowing that the good Lord is with us, secure in the Lord as Mount Zion is. I want to pray with you as we conclude this Psalm 125. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, what an assurance it is for those of us who are living in these COVID-19 uncertain days. What an assurance it is for those who are going through insecurities of life in our marriages, job insecurities, insecurities in our health, 
not knowing what tomorrow holds. What an assurance it is that when we put our trust in you, we will be established as Mount Zion that can never shake. What an assurance it is, Heavenly Father, that when we are secure in you, we will be singled out like Mount Zion and we will tower high and tall as others look upon us, like Mount Zion is surrounded by the other mountains. I pray for your sons and daughters that, Lord, they will put their trust in you. That in the challenging times they are going through, they will rest secure and assured in you that the end is secure and peaceful. May you abide with us as pilgrims. That though we don't know how the journey is ahead of us, we will rest our faith in you knowing that you know the terrain. You know the hills and valleys of our journeys and that you will lead us safely and successfully to our destination. To you, Heavenly Father, be glory for now and even forevermore. We thank and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you and thank you.